Hello, welcome to another week in our garden. Now today we've got the beast from the east and we're getting a little bit of snow and then a little bit of sun. We're not being too bad actually to say we're in the east. We need to get these soil samples out of the ground before we get some real heavy snow or if we get some real heavy snow. We've come down to plot B and I'm going to nip out and take the samples. We'll have to walk on the bed. It's not too sticky today, so we should be all right. And then we'll be able to show you how you take the sample for testing, okay? Now we're in the middle of plot B and we're going to take the samples. We're going to take five samples from five different parts of the bed and then mix them together and then I'll show you what to do after that. We'll take the sample from this area. I'm going to use the knife, it's easier. I push the knife in about four inches and leave it back. I'm going to take the sample from this little bit here, which will be the root zone. I'm not going to let it touch the blade of the knife because that will upset the pH. Okay, so I'll do five like that and then show you. We'll just show you one more in the middle. Right, this one's the middle of the plot. I just take the top away a little bit. And a good four inches down, pull back, and that's where I'm going to take the sample from. Just a little handful, not a lot. Okay? We'll take the other three. Oh, it's cold down here today. I've done my five little samples, put them in the bag, labelled them up, so we know which soil belongs to which plot. We'll just leave the sample in the bag to dry out a little and then we'll show you the next stage. Hello everyone. Now we're in the shed today. We're going to do the soil test. Now if you can remember yesterday we went out and took the samples and within 10 minutes of taking those samples it was completely white over so it's a good job we got them when we did. So we're going to run the test today. I'll just show you what I did with the samples. I've held one back to show you how far we need to go before we let it settle. Obviously I've let the one settle that we're going to test. Right now, this is the sample we took from plot B. I put it in a little bag and it's best if you just let it dry a little. You're never going to get them fully dry. But uh, it's rainwater that's gone on them, which is deionized anyway, and we're going to add it to the deionized water. So the next thing we do is we put this into a jam jar. Not all of it, but some of it. Now I don't like touching it too much, so if you just put a fair amount in, not too much, bigger the sample, Better the result, so they say, but the jam jar is only so big, isn't it? So what we do, if we've gone to there, look, now we need four to one. So we'll say one, two, three, just above this line should be enough in there. It's deionized water always. So we pop that in. Steady and needed. All the way up to just above that line, like four to one or thereabouts, it's not exact. Now what I'm going to do while I've got the top open, I'll just put some water in there. We we'll use that for washing some of the things later. Now you must put a label on your jar of which plot you got it out of, obviously we got this out of plot B, so we will put a label on. We're finished with that sample, but we'll put the label on. There you go, right. Screw the top down tight and then give it a good shake. About 30 seconds, but I won't do 30 seconds, I'll just say. There you go. Now what you do now, you just leave it to settle. 
could take a day, could take a couple of days. On this clay land it takes quite a while. But you'll find that the, the heavy particles stop to the bottom and then the lighter ones and you'll see eventually how much fibrous th um, particles there are because that will be in a black line here somewhere and then the really fine particles will settle on the top. It takes quite a time but that's what you do and put it on one side don't disturb it again there. Now I've already got the samples ready behind me here and I'll carefully put them on the table and show you the next step. The sample in this small bottle is a little bit different because I took the sample from the raised frame. As you can see there's quite a lot of fibre in there that's because we used a lot of peat free compost in bags in there to build it up. So I'll be interested to see the test results on this because then I'll know what to add to this for the carrots and the parsnips etc. So that'll be interesting. Now today we're just going to do the sample from plot A. We're going to do a full test on it. What we have to do we have to test the NPK and the pH. You can see they're all labelled up ready to do. All the everything's got a colour code on it as well. It makes life easier, even the little spoons that you use. So the first thing we need to do, if I use this just to show you, we have to take some of this clear liquid and put it in this test tube up to the three mil mark there okay that's what we'll do now then we carefully as possible it doesn't matter if you get a bit of the coloured liquid as well but we need to pour that clear liquid up as possible see we won't get it all anyway and then put it in there okay it takes a bit of time Got a bubble in that one, isn't it? A little tiny bit more. That'll be plenty, I think. There you go. Now, why I put the water in there is so I can wash this out, you see? Yeah. Then I know it's clean, ready for the next one. Now what we do next, now we have the correct measure of the liquid in there and we need to add K1 test solution to it. We just take it up to the next mark which will be 4. And quite simple, if I can see, there you go. You just dribble it in till it goes up to the next mark which is number 4. You see that's it and because we're running we've done the k1 now we do the k2 which is the powder which will be and we need one scoop of that into there okay careful opening it i don't think it was actually difficult to open it. it's just my hands are so cold so one heat there you go lot, into this liquid, put the cap back on, put it safe and then we put the top on and then we shake it for 30 seconds. There you are and then now it's all shook up we leave that to stand for a good five minutes. We'll do the nitrogen one next which will be the blue so we'll bring this up to three, add that liquid in there to four and one scoop of that and shake it up. The liquid is wobbling a little while we're doing it but I don't think it's mixing too much. There we go. I bet if I put it there then you can see. I 
I don't know if you hear the wind that's howling outside. I'm afraid we're being punished by the beast from the east at the moment. We haven't had an awful lot of snow, but we've had a good three inch, I think, covering, but it soon, soon passed us by. It's just this very, very cold wind we have now. That's up to the three mark. The N1 test solution to that, to the next mark. Up the, up the test tube, as they like to call it. There you go, look. There. Put the top on, put it safe. Now we take the powder, rather difficult to open again, but make sure it's the N2 powder. We've done the M1, this is N2. I managed to open it this time. And then you get your little blue spoon. It's a bit, that's it. We want one heap spoon of that into the liquid, okay? Like that. Put the lid on, put it safe. Then we put the lid on. Screw it down. Then shake it for 30 seconds. Ooh, there's those two done. I'll just do the other two as well and then I'll show you them all done because we'll have to wait now until they settle for at least five minutes. While waiting for the soil test to develop, now with us being snowed in a little bit, I've actually made a copy of my plan that I keep in the diaries. The basic garden is 150 feet long the 28 feet wide that's just a vegetable plot the fruit cage at the top and then i've split the rest of the garden into four plots plot a b c and now d so i'll just show you what i intend planting this year in plot a it will be more or less for the squashes and the courgettes and the pumpkins There'll be a salad tunnel in there as well and then a line of beetroot along this edge here. Plot B carries the raised beds. So on this bed this year I put the parsnips and the early carrots and then this raised bed will be the main crop carrots. There is going to be a little tiny raised bed at the end. I haven't really decided what I'm going to put in that yet. Plot B will carry the heavy croppers. This is the one that's really been manured well through the winter. So your celery, your celeriac, your spring onions, your leeks, your main crop onions will be in there, beans, peas. I should put some swede and turnip at that end. It's a little heavier at that end. And then along this piece here, that's where the overwintered onions are. So they'll come out and probably the swede and turnip go in. Plot C, we're going to do four of our mesh tunnels on there and they'll be for the brassicas. So I should put the Brussels sprouts and probably interplant with some lettuce or salad crops in the first tunnel. Second tunnel has been dug with manure very deep down the bottom for the cauliflower, the broccoli and the calabrese, etc. Three and four, They'll be for your cabbages right through the season from summer, winter and spring cabbage. Then you've got your kohlrabi and the kale will be in those two. And then we'll also interplant with lettuce and radishes etc. The bottom is where the fruit trees are so it looks a large bed but it's not really, it's just on here. This section here will be the potatoes. It'll go right across to beyond the rhubarb, I think. The earlies, the mids and the lates will all be in that area. And then down that centrepiece that gets a lot, a lot of sun, that will be the tomatoes, the outdoor tomatoes. At the very bottom, we have an old stable block, as you've seen when you've been out with us. That's underdeveloped at the moment. When it's all finished, I'll take you in there and show you my nice new shed. 
The rhubarb, as you know, is in the centre at the bottom. It always produces well down there. All the vegetables we're going to put in are all in the diary of when to set them in the greenhouse, etc., and then to plant them in the beds. But because we've had this bad weather now, all that has been thrown back. So the process will still be the same, but to my diary it'll be two or three weeks later this year. Now we'll go back and have a look how these tests are getting on. Now the test is just about complete, as you can see, the colours are coming through. I think I'll do it again when the we've got clearer liquid at the top the colors aren't quite as clear as for you as i'd like but never mind so the first one is a ph if you remember ph test so we take the chart so now we take the ph chart and then we put that to where the color matches and it gives you so our pH is quite high look, 7.5 it says on there, that's, if you look when it settles a little bit it is that one, so I put that down. The next one we're going to do is the nitrates, they're quite low as well look, very low in nitrates, we can't even get a colour on there so they're right down. We'll give it a little longer, but I'm sure I'm going to put the nitrates at very, very low. The next one is your phosphorus. We're having a job to match this one up. I think that is about the, the best colour I can get to it. We'll let it settle a bit more at the top, but I think it'll be that one. And the last one is K, K2, potassium which is these and as you can see we're we're quite high in potassium perhaps that one is it it's perhaps this one we'll put this one as high potassium high that's our little test done as i said before it's quite surprising when you do a test you think your balance is about right but now we can adjust i can see my ph wants adjusting but it was the main brassica bed last year so I anticipated being a little bit high with pH but not that much. The nitrate was low, dry blood will soon pull that up. Phosphorus, I should use a little bit of rock phosphorus on that, just pull that up and K2 potassium is fine. So a little bit of adjustment wanted on plot A. We'll do this all down the plot so we can adjust it so it is about right, okay? So do do the tests, do be surprised. <laughs> it's a good thing to do. And on a day like this, it's a good job to get into. So that'll be about it from this very cold week. It's, we're managing three degrees in the shed and I think my camera person's getting a bit cold. So that'll be it for this week. Many, many thanks for watching. Everybody out there, especially in UK, keep yourselves warm. Leave your garden alone. It'll be there next week when it warms up a little, hopefully. Many, many thanks for our subscribers. We do appreciate it. And hopefully we'll see you next week a little bit warmer. Bye now.